good positional understanding of the chess game and good positional values will help you a great deal um, in choosing openings and playing this opening correctly. Even if you don't memorize move by move uh, the opening moves. A lot of times when you memorize the opening and then you see something is played by your opponent that you don't remember, you're going to have a great deal of difficulties to play it uh, by yourself unless you know what you're looking for. It's like in life, you will never find something if you don't know what you're looking for. So here you have set properly your positional values, what you're trying to do. I want to play for dark squares and I want to play for quick development. I want to play for king side attack. Then you know what, is the, what are the best ways and best means to get there. So uh, let's look for some positional sacrifices they made for some of these uh, concrete values that we just talked about. We already spoke about uh, quick development, developing attack on your opponent's position uh, if he violates some principles. Now we talk about strictly positional maneuvering or um, activity of the piece or having some other positional values. Well, let's play one of the most popular variations of King's Gambit, which is Zemish variation of King's Gambit, e4, d6, f3, castle, bishop e3, knight to d7, queen d2, e5, d5. This is the old, old way of playing Zemish opening for black. That's how they played in 40s, 50s, 60s. Today they play, uh, they, they, they have different ways of playing this um, opening for black. And we will get to one of these ways later in this lecture. So knight h5, white castles long, and black goes f5. Now the best way to play this position for white is e takes f, g takes f, and bishop to d3. Now what white is trying to do here to play knight g to e2 and then to play g4 and trying to opening the lines, the files on a king side and perform the attack against the black's king. Now let's talk what can black do. Now obviously the most of the time in a, in a chess, in the, in almost in any opening, when you see the sides, both uh, the white and black, they castled on the opposite sides of the board, one goes to queen side, the other goes to king side, you know most of the time that game is decided by direct attack. You know white wants attack on king side, so we know with the black that we want to attack on a queen side. So if we want to attack on a queen side with black, what do we want to use? There are two things we have to do. We have to open position on queen side, which is not very easy to do now, and open then use the dark square g7 bishop. So how can we do that? And what are we going to do with the knight on d7? With the knight on d7. So what we do here, here comes the positional sacrifice. Black, what black does, you see the bishops on e3 and d3. They are both aiming to black's 
king side. So what white plays is e4, black plays e4, and this move absolutely forces white to take on e4. And the reason why if, if white plays to, white tries to play bishop c2, then after f4, followed by e3, black has great position. So obviously, pawn takes pawn. Now, what is the idea of this sacrifice? Now, if black takes on e4, the knight is going to take on e4, and what black did, black, they only helped white to open position uh, on a king side. But obviously that's not what we're trying to do when we play e4. White plays f takes e, and now the f4. It's a typical positional patternized, uh, it's a p patternized move. F4, bishop goes to F2, and now you see that black's dark square bishop is very nicely placed on diagonal open, and black is placing the knight on E5, absolutely dominating square. And if white plays knight F3, then after bishop G4, what approximately you may see happening here, bishop E2, Bishop takes f3, pawn takes f3, and you see that black is down a pawn, white does not have real weaknesses, but knight on e5 is very well placed, and now all you have to do for black is to open some files on the queen side, and then you're going to use the powerful knight on e5, bishop on g7, and e5 square he is... Um, great help for you to start the attack on a queen side. This is, a, we, so we sacrifice the pawn to get the weak square on e5. This is a pattern you have seen, if you look at the tournament that was played, um, uh, well, it, in 1950, I think it's 51, it, in a Bronstein's book, in the Zurich tournament. There were a few games where uh, black used this positional sacrifice, e4 and f4. It was played by Neidorf, Bargligerich, and by other uh, top players in the world. 